Welcome to Exhibition. And hello, Annalisa Ferraris. Hi, Richard. Thank you for having me. Great to see you there. Uh, and uh, your exhibition is New Dawn at James Macon Gallery in Melbourne. Um, and as we look at the images uh, from this exhibition, they've got a, a tremendous sense of discipline, a tremendous sense of precision. What do they conjure up for you? How do they feel for you? For me, the minimalist abstraction has a sort of calming feel to it. I see the discipline in it now that you, you pointed out, but I guess it's more repetition and process for me. So, yeah, it, it has a calmingness that also... Um, how would you say it sort of makes you wonder what exactly it is with some of the more abstract pieces? And as you say, there is a, a, a precision to the process that you're involved with in creating the works. They are very precisely constructed as we can see looking at them. Yeah. Is that process for you actually a calm one, as you describe? Um, I would say for the most part, but there are definitely points of frustration and, um, yeah, endurance, I guess. <laughs> what is, uh, for you, the enduring attraction of minimalism? And this exhibition does seem to have stronger elements of minimalism than I, than I remember seeing in, in almost any of your work before. Yeah, um, I think it's it's the refinement and the learning to say more, if not the same amount, with less. It's sort of, that is difficult to teach yourself after so many years of not doing that. So I guess it's it's a refining of your practice. When you mention many years of not doing that. These images are a, are a very far cry uh, to some of the work of yours. I remember from some years ago, for example, with um, still life works, uh, almost noir collections of cigarette butts in ashtrays and pistols on yeah. bedside tables. You know, they, they were very active in their narrative. This is such yeah. a change from those times. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there were elements of what I'm doing now present in those still lifes. It was still the hard-edged minimalist forms and the shadows. And now it's less about the narrative and necessarily the landscape and more about just the shadows and the angles and... Yeah, stripping it right back. What is it about those shadows and angles uh, and very precise forms that appeals to you so much? Um, I think it's the illusion of depth that is so enticing and calming and confusing all at the same time. Because what I guess our brains are constantly working and if you look at a painting of a pool, you'll say, oh, that's a pool. Whereas if you look at just something where it's alluding to depth and space, your brain can't quite place what it is or where it is. And I kind of like that sort of struggle. So the swimming pool as a, a motif, which has been uh, an important one for you, for some time now, yeah. how did that develop and, and why do you think the swimming pool developed so strongly? Um, I think it started off, it started off differently to where it is now. It was more about the space and the redundancy of that space and how you feel when it changes just by removing an element like water all of a sudden the form so feels so different and the environment and it evolved 
from that sort of interest in the the um, redundancy into just the simpler side of it of the shadows and the angles and the, that weird hole in the ground that you can't really do anything with. There is uh, visually quite a strong art history of swimming pools in, in obviously more contemporary art. Um, I'm thinking of some of the works of Hockney and, and others um, who've portrayed those very clean, uh, very refreshing lines. Do you feel a sense of identity with part of that tradition in any way? Yeah, definitely. I think the image of the swimming pool in art has been evolving and used so, so much throughout history. I guess it's nice to keep looking at it and have an affiliation with it. And even though it's something I never thought I would have now painted so many of them. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice to be a part of that. The swimming pool is very much a, a built form, a, a human constructed form. And you do seem to have a strong interest in the form and indeed in architecture, uh, because um, you reference, for example, the uh, Le Corbusier pool. Uh, I think a, a previous work of yours from a, a year or two back um, included a reference to the architect Harry Seidler. You know, so architecture is something that is a strong motivator for you? Yeah, definitely. Architecture and um, the, and Art Deco buildings and forms and um, brutalist architecture, it's all definitely had a huge influence on my work and it's like my way of being included in that world but still staying an artist. The work Art Deco lobby seems <laughs> almost to be moving towards complete abstraction it yeah. even has an, an element of optical illusion in it. Does that mean that that is, for you, the next iteration? Are you heading more and more towards abstraction? Um, I think so. I think it's the natural progression of where I'm, I'm heading. And I've always loved minimal abstraction. It's my favourite, um, yeah, movement, I guess. So it makes sense to keep refining and stripping back and moving more in that direction. And yet there does also seem um, a narrative implicit through the title. So it's Art Deco Lobby, you know, we're in yeah. a hotel somewhere. Uh, I think there's a reference to, to Paris. Uh, and, and so yeah. that sense of placement, that sense of a story, does still seem to be there. Is that, is that still an important element for you? I think so. I guess as artists, when we travel and move around and we pick up little things visually here and there, it's so important to keep that part of the fabric of what we do. And by throwing out something little like Lobby in Paris, you don't know where it is or if it even exists, but all of a sudden you're quickly in Paris for that second. Mm. And I think that's the nicest part, one of the nicest parts about being an artist is being influenced by your ever-changing environment. One of the parts of being an artist, of course, is that you have to make work. What is your approach towards the making of work? Uh, do you have a, a routine or is it very sporadic and spontaneous? How, how do you work? Um, I'm quite routined, I think. Um, I feel like maybe my partner would disagree, but I think <laughs> I am quite routined. I, my studio is about two minutes down the road here in Darlinghurst, and I like to get in there by 8.30, if not earlier. And I'll try and have regimented lunch breaks and put on my work uniform when I get there and do all the things that I associate with a real, well, not a real job, but a, 
um, more conventional job. Yes, and and that sense of that sense of structure that you just described sounds um, uh, very real, but also fairly isolated. Yeah. Is, is the creation of work for you a, a, an isolated process, or or are there elements of of consultation? Are there are there colleagues or artists that you you like to talk with, or indeed have mentors amongst? Definitely, I think. I mean, I feel very lucky to have a lot of close friends in the art world because you, because we lack that work, that normal workplace environment, it's nice to have people to talk things over with or bounce ideas off and um, I'm constantly doing that. I actually share my studio with two other people, but I'm, they work, they have other jobs, so I'm in there al alone a lot um, and yeah I really need that connection and you need to be re reassured that you're doing the right thing and all that kind of thing so I think it's important. Going back to the works which uh, as we've discussed are in a very very clean very precise uh, look and line and form does that leave any room for enjoyment of or exploration of, of paint and material for you? Um, I think it does. I work with my works. I start with acrylic and then work my way up to oil. And it's the constant mixing of paint and correction of shadows and playing with colour and even mixed media pieces, um, that that's where I find the enjoyment with the paint and yeah, refining the colors. And I guess even though they don't look as painterly, the process in getting them there is very painterly. Well, that, that insight into your process uh, and also into the works themselves has been great to share. So, Annalisa Ferraris, thanks very much for sharing your exhibition with us. Thank you, Richard. Thank you.